Hello everyone. So I haven't uh, posted a video for a few weeks and for, for that I apologize. Just been, you know, busy uh, with, you know, several projects, but uh, everything is going well for me and hopefully it is for you also. Uh, but now I have a few different topics that I'd uh, like to explore in some videos. So hopefully you'll get uh, a few videos in fairly quick succession. Uh, the first thing I wanted to talk about is um, actually some, you know, very bad news that came out of a gene therapy uh, clinical trial in a neuromuscular disease uh, was announced um, a little more than a month ago. And that is in, the disease is X-linked myotubular myopathy. Um, and a, basically a couple of patients in a clinical trial for a gene therapy that's being developed for that disease uh, died during the treatment, you know, which is kind of, you know, e extremely bad news. And so I wanted to explore a little bit about, you know, what's going on uh, and also what the implications are both for that disease and for gene therapy for other neuromuscular diseases. Okay, so first, um, X-linked uh, myotubular myopathy, um, it's X-linked, you know, which means the, the gene that has a mutation is on the X chromosome. What that means in practical terms is that if you're female, you have two chances to get the gene right. If you're male, you only get one chance. So, you know, overwhelmingly um, people who are affected by this disease are male. And it has, you know, it, you know, starts to have symptoms, you know, shortly after birth and, you know, maybe even during fetal development and, you know, has a, a very severe phenotype. People have a, you know, a high degree of disability and a, a greatly shortened life expectancy. Okay, so, you know, it's something that, you know, you definitely would love to have a gene therapy for. And, you know, um, unfortunately for the community, they, you know, thought they were very close to having an approved treatment um, only to have this happen. So, you know, um, you know, first of all, you know, condolences to, um, you know, the families of, you know, the patients who, you know, passed away during the trial and also to, you know, the whole community who I'm sure really had their hopes up, you know, only to have, you know, something, you know, really terrible and greatly disappointing happen to them, you know. So, you know, that's kind of the first thing that I want to say. Now, I explored some of the, the technical issues um, a few weeks ago in a series of tweets, but I wanted to also do a video about this. Um, and so basically, I'll, I'm going to, you know, show, you know, a few tables and, you know, other issues, uh, you know, about gene therapy and about this particular disease. So, um, but it turns out that um, I'm not sure that the safety issues that came to light in this particular trial are generally applicable to all muscle diseases. So, um, you know, I'll just say that up front and, you know, then, you know, go through some of the, um, the particulars. Okay, so here I have a comparison of some of the uh, gene therapy drugs for different neuromuscular diseases that uh, either are approved or in clinical trials. So um, first, the uh, Avexis drug for SMA is approved, and uh, so the recommended dosage is actually from the prescribing information. Uh, for all of the other drugs which are in clinical trials, uh, the dosage that um, I'm listing 
uh, is the maximum dosage that was used in the clinical trial. Okay, so we have three different uh, drugs for Duchenne muscular dystrophy. Uh, I'm calling them all mini dystrophin. Some of them call, some of the companies call it mini, some micro. Uh, ba basically, what all of them are are different versions of the dystrophin gene, which are shortened enough so that the gene will fit in uh, an AAV. And so the first thing to notice is that uh, the highest um, dosage that was used in Adente's uh, X-linked myotubular myopathy trial is actually the, the highest dosage that was listed, um, was used uh, in any of these trials. Uh, Pfizer's highest dose was the same, uh, also 3 times 10 to the 14th uh, vector genomes per kilogram. Uh, the highest used in um, Sarepta's trials for uh, DMD and also um, LGMD2E uh, was 2 times 10 to the 14th, and uh, solids highest uh, level was also 2 times 10 to the 14th. Now, uh, the next thing I want you to call your attention to is uh, what uh, AAV uh, vector was used. Uh, uh, Avexis's uh, uh, gene therapy for SMA, as well as solids and Pfizer's for DMD, uses AAV9. Uh, the two Sarepta drugs both use uh, AAV RH74. Uh, the Adentes drug uh, for X-linked my myotubular myopathy is AAV8. Now, does this make a difference? Uh, I don't really know. Uh, the, it is worth noting that AAV8, uh, the Adentes drug, is the only case I know of where AAV8 is being used in gene therapy for a neuromuscular disease, although there are some other types of diseases for which AAV8 is being used. Uh, that may or may not make a difference. Okay, so the next um, thing that I want to point it out is that for um, X-linked myotubular myopathy, uh, this is an excerpt from the uh, gene reviews entry, which is on the uh, NIH website, that there is actually liver involvement in uh, X-linked myotubular myopathy. You know, even though it's ostensibly a muscle disease, but uh, some patients can have liver, you know, lesions, and uh, that can also actually be a, you know, risk to their lives. Um, now, that's worth noting, and the reason it's worth noting is that if you look at the prescribing uh, information for Avexis's uh, SMA drug, it points out that, you know, liver injury is uh, a risk of receiving gene therapy and also, you know, points out that uh, patients with pre-existing liver impairment may be at higher risk. So this is from the prescribing information, which, you know, was, you know, all language that was reviewed and approved by the FDA. Now, for SMA, there isn't typically liver involvement. And in fact, the way that uh, the Zolgensma treatment is normally given. It can only be given currently up to age two. So these are, you know, very young children. So that typically isn't uh, an issue for that. However, uh, for X-linked myotubular myopathy, where there's a, you know, liver involvement in the disease, um, that may be a problem. Now, Further complicating this, uh, in you know the next paragraph in the in the boxed warning, uh, it says to monitor things like you know a AST and ALT levels, which are uh, typically recorded on you know a, a blood panel that you might have. 
the problem is that uh, people with muscle disease often have elevated levels, not from their livers, but from their muscles. So uh, there are other ways of monitoring liver function, but uh, the, the most commonly used ways um, don't actually work. You know, you'll always get a high level whether or not anything's wrong with your liver. So um, what, you know, it may be is the combination uh, for this drug of using a, you know, one of the highest doses, um, you know, used to date in any gene therapy trial, uh, and gene therapy being very hard on the liver, you know, for gene therapy for any disease, and the disease that they're treating um, having liver involvement, which, you know, um, you know, puts people in maybe in, in the higher risk, uh, you know, due to pre-existing liver involvement. Okay, so in conclusion, um, you know, I'd like to, you know, say that, um, li you know, liver toxicity is a known issue in gene therapy. Uh, which is why it's on, you know, the boxed warning that the FDA mandated for um, the SMA gene therapy treatment. Um, and typically what's been done in, you know, all, all of the clinical trials so far is people are even are given um, corticosteroids, you know, for most commonly prednisone, for uh, at least a month, and in some of the trials, they've even upped this to two months, uh, to basically let the body uh, clear the um, AAV uh, before, so you know, so the immune system doesn't overreact and cause a problem, uh, particularly in the liver. And then some some of the trials have also given the participants. Um, you know, complement uh, inhibitor, complement is one aspect of the immune system, and there's some biologic drugs which can, um, you know, inhibit, inhibit um, you know, that aspect of the immune system from overreacting. Uh, you know, basically the, the AAV is there to deliver a gene that your body needs and is there to help you, but your immune system doesn't know that, so it says, oh, a virus is infecting me. I better, you know, you know, freak out and overreact, and that actually just causes a problem. Okay, uh, but um, in in none of the other clinical trials in other neuromuscular diseases, you know, have any patients died, and you know, there have been some safety issues. Um, you know, I won't, you know, go into all of the details, but, um, you know, for the most part, um, they're, they've been able to be managed pretty well, and they're developing the protocols, um, you know, and kind of know how to do this um, safely. Um, it doesn't appear so far that this is going to uh, impact uh, gene therapy development for other diseases. It looks like, you know, what's been observed in the X-linked myotubular myopathy trial um, seems to be particular to that disease because it has liver involvement. Um, now, one concern that I have about my particular disease, um, limb girdle muscular dystrophy type 2b, is that for that you have to sort of essentially bring in the uh, gene in two pieces uh, and then have the two pieces of the gene find each other. Um, what that means is that using a, as high a dosage of the virus is actually very important because if there's you know, more of both halves of the gene, they're more likely to find each other as well as, you know, um, half of the, the gene is, you know, half of the virus contained the first half of the gene, the other half contained the second half of the gene, uh, which means that, you know, the normal um, 
you know, amount of viruses you're delivering, the number of copies of the complete gene is already divided by two. So um, it may be that, you know, because um, these fatalities in this disease, you know, happened, you know, only at a higher dose, um, the FDA might be, you know, more, um, you know, concern or, um, you know, less inclined to approve uh, upping the dose of AAVs, you know, beyond what's uh, been currently established. Um, but we'll just have to wait and see. So, you know, anyway, that's, that's my take on this, um, you know, the, the bottom line is that, uh, um, you know, clinical trials um, exist for new drugs for a reason. Um, you know, there can be risks. For a new technology like gene therapy, um, you don't necessarily know all of the risks. Certainly, you know, for every different disease that you're, you know, developing a drug for in advance, um, you know, there's a lot of safety protocols that are put in place to try and minimize that, but um, you know, as we've seen here, they do not eliminate the risks. And you know, so you know, all of the people who participate in clinical trials, you know, yes, they're looking for a medical benefit, but you know, they're also, in some cases, taking a risk. Um, how big a risk, um, they don't always know in advance. So, you know, I, you know, salute all of them for their contributions in uh, developing us new medicine. So um, with that, I'll um, uh, wish all of you well and talk to you next time.